Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you are the living light who transformed darkness into light. Through the blessings of this glorious Sunday, make us worthy to praise you with all those who saw the radiant light of your resurrection. We worship and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. raise glory, honor, and praise to the living one who by his death gave life to his creation. By his resurrection he saved his church, gave joy to his flock, and brought us back to his Father. And he enriched us with the gifts of his Spirit. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday, and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. Only begotten Son, you were born of the Father before all ages, and by your creative will you separated light from darkness on this the first day of the week. You fashioned all creation to honor Adam, the image of your majesty. We praise and thank you and celebrate, proclaiming, Blessed are you, for you appeared in the flesh on earth, like us, and you lived among us. Blessed are you, for you were buried and accounted among the dead, and you shined your light in the sadness of the tomb. Blessed are you, for you rose to life, giving good hope to all, and you filled the angels with radiance, and they appeared at your tomb like flashes of lightning. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make us worthy to rejoice in the glory of your radiant resurrection. Breathe life into our departed and make them worthy to stand at your right hand in your eternal light that you have prepared for those who love you. With them we praise and thank you for your graces and glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
day of all the days, made for worship and for prayer. Through it may our minds find joy, and our bodies be refreshed. May the Spirit fill our souls with the grace to strengthen us, so that we O Lord, accept the fragrance of our incense and of our prayers, and we may become, may we become a sweet fragrance through our good works and through our good actions. Hear our petitions and grant rest to our departed in your dwelling place of joy. O Lord, our God, to you be glory, now and forever. Amen. Shout with joy from the mountain, Sunday is a feast so great. Offer praise to the Lord God, and with angels celebrate. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Baruch Mor Aroho Dilan. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. I could not talk to you as spiritual people, but as carnal ones as infants in Christ. I fed you milk and not solid food, 
because you were unable to take it. Indeed, you are still now not able, and even now, for you are still in the flesh. While there is jealousy and rivalry among you, are you not fleshly and behaving in an ordinary human manner? Whenever someone says, I belong to Paul, or another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely men? What is Apollos after all? And what is Paul? Servants through whom you became believers, just as the Lord assigned each one. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God brought about the growth. Therefore, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who causes the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters are equal, and each shall receive wages in proportion to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers, and you are God's cultivation, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building upon it. But each one must be careful how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one that is already placed, namely, Jesus Christ. Praise be to God always. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be rejoice in it and be glad. to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. We burn this incense. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, Afterward, Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and announcing the good tidings of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve, and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called the Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chuzza. Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. 
When a large crowd had gathered with people from one town after another journeying to see him, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the pathway and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew along with it, and they choked it out. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. And after saying this, he cried out, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Then his disciples asked him what the meaning of this parable might be. And he answered, Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to the rest they are made known through parables, so that they may look but not see, and hear but not understand. So this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard, but the devil comes along and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but these have no root. They believe only for a time, and they fall away in time of trial. As for the seed that fell among thorns, they are those who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and the riches and the pleasures of this life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, embrace it with a generous and good heart. And these bear fruit through perseverance. This is the truth, peace be with you. For we are God's fellow workers, and you are God's cultivation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So today we begin with St. Ephraim, or as we normally will say, and written on your banner on the other side, Mor Ephraim, Mor. Mor Morio is the term for Lord or it, your superior. And so it's used for the saints, the version for the feminine version is Mart, Mart, Mor and Mart. So Mor Marun is Saint Mary. Mart Mariam would be Saint Mary. This is an example. Now when Saint Paul writes this, first we look at the epistle a bit today. When Saint Paul is writing the beginning of his first letter to the Corinthians, remember he started this church. He's the one who was there initially to bring everyone together and to organize the church. And he writes to them very simply by saying, you're not mature yet. This is, fits very well having just done the last three or four weeks on the stages in the spiritual life of how we go deeper into this mystery. And I have to say for you in these last weeks, that was not milk that was more along the lines of a steak. And so I congratulate you for sitting through the 100 degree heat for all these weeks as we try to look deeper at the whole transformation that is meant to take place 
within the soul. But Saint, what St. Paul is doing is he's writing the Corinthians because they do not understand what they are, who they are as the children of God, who they are as the baptized within the word incarnate. And that's why he says, you're still children. You're still infants. You don't understand. And because of that reason, I've only been able to give you the simple things, milk, because you can't eat solid food. And so, of course, the desire of St. Paul is to bring them deeper. In the letter to the Hebrews, when he writes to the Hebrews, he's going to say, you know, what are you supposed to do now? Go back to milk. You're meant to be maturing and continually moving along the path of the gospel. You don't go back and start, you know, eating baby food. Well, I guess some of us do at a certain age, perhaps. But it's not the normal path that we actually make. And so St. Paul, when he writes to the Corinthians, he wants to remind them of who they are by their baptism and their calling. And so he uses these terms of carnal and spiritual. So if you remember now four or five weeks ago when we first started, that tripartite division of spirit, psuche, the soul and body, that threefold division of the human person, the human individual. And so what he's saying is here is, when he talks about spirit and flesh, the term flesh is not pejorative in the initial reading, and he uses it several times here. When he speaks about being carnal or fleshly, in the beginning he's saying you're only living according to nature. You're not allowing yourselves to be fully directed and led by the Spirit of God. Remember our definition of mystic. The basic understanding and the basic definition of mystic or mysticism is the individual who is opened to fully the guidance of the Spirit of God. And so here when he says you're not spiritual enough and you're only fleshly, he's saying you still live too naturally according to your wits and the way you think things should be. And until your soul is opened up and your spirit is opened up and your body ultimately is opened up to the spirit of, to the spirit of holiness, of the divine spirit of God, you're always going to be down. You're always going to be carnal. Carnal does not mean impure. Carnal means just being human. And he's saying that's not what you're called to. That's what you're being called from, of being merely human. You are meant to be the children of God. It's not a poetic term. It means that you live by the life which is of your Father, the hidden Father of eternity. So that's what St. Paul is using in these terms. Later on in this section, he uses the term carnal again when he talks about them in all their fights in parishes. Parishes always have fights. Sometimes it's just kind of a low simmer. Sometimes it's knockout dragouts. Be that as it may, St. Paul is talking about this in Corinth. And apparently what they're doing is, who baptized whom? So I belong to Paul, I'm Paul's. No, 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 Apollos, he's much more eloquent anyway. I belong to Apollos. And they're fighting over who baptized them in the one church at Corinth. And he's like, this is totally carnal. You are totally human. You're picking sides. You're playing on teams. This is not your calling to the body of Christ. And that's why he says you're being carnal. Here it's pejorative. Here it's not that you're just simply not fully following the Spirit of God. Here you're just being completely mundane and only thinking about yourselves. And as human beings, we always pick sides. They've known this, they've done recent studies in psychology where you'll take, it, you'll take children in school and just have them in the classroom and just say, all right, you'll be team A and you over here will be team B and this little group of another six or seven will be team C. And then through the little experiment, you ask them different questions and you will watch this classroom divide into three factions. They haven't even had a definition of what team A means. I just know team A is the best one and team B and team C, scoundrels. 
which was not a word little kids would use, so they're just losers. And the human nature is we just pick sides. This is what you're watching happening place, not just nationally, but internationally. Everyone's just picking sides and then throwing rocks. And St. Paul is dealing with this kind of attitude already at Corinth. And he says, am I not wrong to say you're acting purely as men? You're just human beings. You're not living as the children of God. So in this occasion of using the word flesh or carnal, it's meant to be pejorative. Remember the word pejorative from the Latin peor means worse. The word peor, the center part of that word in Latin means worse. You're acting worse than you really should be doing. That's pejorative. And so St. Paul is reminding them, so let us then go to more Ephraim Kenoro de Rojo. St. Ephraim is known as Kenoro de Rojo. He's known as the harp of the spirit. So not, not only was St. Ephraim a saint and leading in that mystical life, being led by the spirit of God, he is considered to be the sound box through his writings, through his poetry. And not just through his writing, but we know that during his lifetime, he organized women's choirs. This was quite something. And he organized groups of women. We'll talk about that later on. And he wrote a lot of these poems, these hymns, for them to sing. The sad part, of course, is we don't know what the melodies were. There's no musical notation. But St. Ephraim is known as the harp of the spirit, Kenero Dorojo. And so since you've done so well all of this time these last weeks, we're gonna make this short, short for me. And your only assignment is, is to find on the back of the map, which are on the bulletins, to locate the two cities and Google bigger maps some point. I could only fit a, such a size map in one column of the bulletins. St. Ephraim is worthwhile for us to know, not just because of the poetry. We'll get back to the map in a moment. Not just because he's a saint and one of the foundational fathers of the Syriac church. Remember I told you, my task is that you all have to begin to think like Antioch. So it's not just that he's the foundation of the melodies, the theology in that, but St. Ephraim also lived in a period of time very much like ours. He was born in the city of Nisibina, Nisibis in English. And Nisibis is on that map, that's part of your assignment, is you have to find where Nisibis is and why it was an important place. We know him as living in Edessa, but he actually only spent the last 10 years of his life in Edessa. In other words, St. Ephraim is a Persian. He belonged to the ancient Persian Empire, and the Syriac tradition is very much that influence of Persia. And the whole border, when I said that it's very much similar to our age, that whole Mesopotamian area between the, between the Euphrates and the Tigris, everyone has always been fighting over it. The exception is when you have a period of Ottoman Empire where it's all this part of the same empire, so they're not fighting. Or when the Babylonians control the whole area. But before that, it's the Babylonians fighting the Chaldeans, it's north and south, it's east and west. And through the third, second, third, fourth centuries, the fifth century, the battles that are fought are not between America invading Saddam Hussein, though we continue that tradition historically, but it's the war that goes on between the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. And so St. Ephraim is born in Nisibis, Nisibis or Nisibina, but he winds up having to flee as a refugee to go west, which is why he winds up landing in the city of Urhoi, that the Greeks call Edessa, and it's there that he spends the last 10 years of his life. That's the two, those are a number of things to think of. The refugee, the war, 
And we are still fighting wars because Nisibis, when you look up it, you'll notice it is in what we call, it's north of, but the Mosul Plains. All of the news you've had about Mosul, 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 Kurds, Kurds, Mosuls, Turks, they're all still fighting in exactly the same area. And the border would move back and forth. And so part in 363, Rome lost, and so it meant that Persia pushed their border further west towards the Euphrates. And when that happened, in the northern part, north of the Mosul Plains, which is ancient Nineveh, as I've told you, in that area then part of the war treaty, notice that the Romans even treated them better, even after only a couple generations of conversion after Constantine, because this is only 363, that what happens is part of the Roman treaty with Persia is they give up their fortresses, the border moves, but the treaty allows Persia's required by the treaty to allow all the Christians who want to leave the border cities to go west into the empire where more Christians live so they would not risk persecutions. That's how St. Ephraim, in his later life, winds up having to pull up stakes and moving further west to Edessa where there were, was a major Christian population. So that's why I said short, your assignment is to make sure you can locate geographically in your head. And this has always been the most difficult thing about teaching. Remember we all had to learn where Kuwait was in 1990? It's like Kuwait. And so we had to go look up and then the news had to show you every night a map continually showing you where Iraq was and where Afghanistan is. And because most people's geography is not great. We can't even locate the villages of Maine, let alone something that's on the other side of the planet. And for that reason, I gave you the map because it's important to understand that these fights that go on, these arguments, let's say fights, these arguments that go on, the last point is in the fourth century, the church was riven by arguments over the divinity of our Lord. And what we'll see over these next weeks is that Mor Ephraim, in his writings, is an apologist. He is defending the orthodox apostolic faith and the divinity of our Lord in his writings. They're not poems about the birds and the beautiful shoreline. They are poems which are theological in order to bring forth truth and to name out those who are in error and to denounce them and why they are wrong. And so that clarity of mind is one of the reasons why our period of time in the history of the church also looks similar. So the strife, the refugees, the dislocation, the arguments over catechesis, the arguments over doctrine, that is the generation and the century that St. Ephraim lived in. So when you go home, locate, either on a bigger screen, or on the back of your bulletin, Nisibis, because you'll see that Nisibis is on the very border of the Persian Empire, the Sassanid Empire which is why he's forced to leave. And when this is done, we'll understand the arguments and the discussions and the strife that every single one of you are part of because you live in 2020. I live in 2020. And because you are Catholics, the notion of the clarity of doctrine of the apostolic patrimony is also fundamental, which is why I leave you with the quotation that before we go into detail seeing St. Ephraim over these next weeks, the quotation that St. Paul says when he says, who, are, who is Paul? Who is Apollos? We're nothing. We are collaborators, we work with God. I laid the foundation, it's true, but Apollos is building on it, and you are that building. Why are we bickering and arguing since we are all working together on the same path? It's what the word synod means. When we talk about a synod, it usually means the bishops all go to Rome. Synod literally means, to, syn is together, odos is pathway. Synod literally means we are together on the same road. And St. Paul says, why are we arguing over these things? 
unless it is about the revelation, the healing revelation that God has given us. And that's why he says at the end of this letter we have today, but be careful how you build on this foundation because no one, no one can lay another foundation other than that which has already been laid, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord. And may that certitude and that foundation draw us deeper into the apostolic faith and may the prayers of St. Ephraim be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God. To live all things to me, for our sin and for our salvation, the kingdom of heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, for the firm and the virgin Mary, and the King of Heaven. For our sin, he was crucified and conscious by God. He suffered the death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and the poor Lord was the He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand. Tell what Madame Heda Loho, or what I loho than Holy Tayo. Wayne and Silgo Taibo talk, a little bite of West Buddha, higher Lord God.
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, hide in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ in his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary and Saint Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the repose of Edgar Mosley. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of the Twelve Apostles on page 754. 754. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God.
O Lord, may your peace and security and your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy. Make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim, who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify and proclaim. Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit. You are holy and the giver of all that is good. For our salvation, your only begotten Son became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary, and by his divine plan he saved and redeemed us. And Sabe Lachma Beda Kodi Shanto O Barach O Kadesh Vaksu Yabil Talmita O Kadomara Sabe Khula Mehne Kulkho Kono Denita Fakhuru Dahlo faikun wahlab sagiye me taqseu me tihem khosoyan khame wa khayin al alam alamin Anna Alko so domsi o men hamro o men mayo. Barahu Kadesh. Yabel Talmi Dao Kado Mara. Sabish Tao Mehene Pulho. Hono Denita. De mo di la di ati ki khadato dakhlu fai ko wakhlab sagiye mete shadu meti hem khosoyom khame wa khayran alam alami
Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. upon your worshippers and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time to reward all people justly according to their deeds for this your church implores you and through you and with you implores your father saying As we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We since he may make this brand the body of Christ our God Amen. and make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God Amen. may these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins the healing of souls and bodies and the strengthening of consciences so that none of your faithful may perish Rather make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. We raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your Holy Church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the shout of Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, with blameless lives and with purity and holiness, may they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them, for you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured suffering for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord 
Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, awaiting that life, giving voice, calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf, and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Compassionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy with pure, to pray with purity and holiness, and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom with your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries of purity and holiness, that through them we may be forgiven and made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity, one Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth, we give the glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, Lord God and Father. And we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and the glory of your holy name, and that of your only Son and your Holy Spirit now and forever. Peace be with you. O Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake, and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.